Greetings, welcome to Cranfield University as that whole music fades away. My name is Toby Thompson. I'm the director of the glorious Granville Turner here, studio here at Cranfield University. Thank you for taking the time with us. We are discovering, exploring the apprenticeship portfolio here at Cranfield University. If you're in the wrong meeting, uh, stick around anyway. And if you're watching the recording, please keep the conversation going with Cranfield University. We want to hear from you. We're going to be together for, I reckon, about an hour, but it depends entirely on your questions. This is an interactive session, so we do want your questions pretty much at any time in the time that we are together. So find the Zoom text chat. I'm sure you know how to use Zoom by now. Uh, and type us, hopefully, a complicated question or a full question or something that gets us discussing your issue. Uh, and sometimes a, available, uh, an issue that's available for us all. So please find that Zoom text chat. Maybe start off by telling us where in the world you are. That's always nice for us to hear. So tell us where in the world you are. So I can't do this alone. I'm joined in the studio by Christina Goodman. Christina is the Apprenticeship Planning and Operations Lead. So Christina's going to spend a bit more time with us explaining a bit more about that one. We're also joined, and this gives me great pleasure to explain, we're joined by two students and the Head of Apprenticeships, first of all. Sarah, I'm going to just in quickly introduce Sarah, Sarah Lewis. Sarah Lewis is the Head of Communications at Iris Software. Um, so, Sarah, good to have you with us. Wendy Wheeler, a friend and colleague. Wendy, we spent a good bit of time together on one of the apprenticeship programs that you're going to hear a bit more about. Uh, Wendy is Principal Environment and Social Value Manager at Network Rail. So they can tell you, both Sarah and Wendy, more about what is it like in one of the apprenticeship programs that we run here at Cranfield. What's it really like? To give you the official version of that, we're also joined by Neil, Neil Withy, who's the head of apprenticeships here at Cranfield University. So thank you, guys. Stick around, please, because we're going to come back to you with a ton of questions, Sarah and Wendy especially. But Christina, I'm going to start with you. Tell us what, first of all, what is, or sorry, who are you, first of all, and then what is an apprenticeship? Thanks, Toby. So I'm Christina. I'm one of the apprenticeship leads here at Cranfield. And essentially, my role is to support employers and applicants right from that very first inquiry. Why would they like to come to Cranfield? What are we offering? All the way through that application process to their first day on campus or live online. Uh, see their smiling faces as they <laughs> join us and they start their apprenticeship journey. We spend a lot of time with Christina on programs such as this. It's fantastic to be working with you. Your background is in education by the sound of it. You've done a lot of work in universities. Uh, so I have been at another university before I joined Cranfield, but I've been at Cranfield for over 10 years now in various different roles. And so I absolutely love it here. It's such a great place to work, uh, such a great culture and lots of amazing people. So if people are worried about coming back into education, I know what you're going to say. Don't worry. Exactly. Don't worry at all. So. In and around 20% of our apprentices have never been to university before. Ever. So never been before. No undergraduate degree. Um, and there are many, you know, it's been quite a long time since they've been to university or done any type of formal education. Mm -hmm. And that definitely isn't a barrier when it comes to apprenticeships. It's almost a reason to come back and, and start learning again. And here we are at a postgraduate only institution, a little bit intimidating. You're saying don't be intimidated. Definitely not. And if, if things like, oh, I've got to write an assignment, <laughs> definitely don't worry about that. We have a fantastic library team uh, where they have specialists in different areas and they will help you learn to write those assignments, how to write in an academic way again. So that's definitely not a barrier to joining us. You're going to get a lot of that advice coming up. So please take it to heart because it's true. We believe, we believe it completely. OK, so apprenticeships, what are they? I know you've got a bunch of slides to show us, but what is an apprenticeship? Uh, it's a golden opportunity. Uh, so it's a chance to go back to learn, to start learning again with your employer's support. So not only their support in terms of um, giving you time to come and learn uh, and time to apply that learning in the workplace, but they're going to pay for it as well. Wow. There's not many things are free in life. <laughs> That's for sure. Why would you not do it? Why would you not? And um, so I do have some slides. So um, if we go over to those. Um, so what is an apprenticeship programme? So it's a programme which provides apprentices the opportunity to upskill their knowledge, skills and behaviours. And you'll talk about, well, your hearers talk about knowledge, skills and behaviours, or KFBs, as we like to call them, uh, quite a lot when we talk about apprenticeships. So they're, they're the essential parts of the apprenticeship standard. So every apprenticeship has a standard and that outlines what you're going to learn. So which knowledge, skills and behaviours you are going to develop. And um, it gives you uh, apprentices 
um, a chance to advance their career. So they're still in their career, they're going to develop those knowledge skills and behaviours. And actually what we see is apprentices advance themselves so quickly that they get promotions in the middle of their apprenticeship. And um, so it, they don't even have to wait till the end. Um, quite often it's, it's in the middle when they're getting that promotion. And they can add value to the organisation straight away. And I think this is a key thing. It, they're not just learning part time with an apprenticeship. You're taking what you're learning in the classroom at Cranfield and implementing it into the workplace straight away. So your organisation sees that impact of your learning straight away. And um, they don't have to wait till the end until you pass your programme. Um, and often the uh, assignments and uh, group projects that you undertake are related to your work to your workplace and, and what they would like to achieve as well and also it's an absolutely great way to network to, to meet new people who are like-minded or really have different ideas to you that you can then implement into your workplace as well so that is really exciting it's a, definitely a friends for life opportunity um, so as I said, an apprenticeship um, it's, it's a paid job, um, so you will be paid whilst you're learning and that, that is different from uh, maybe undertaking a, a postgraduate degree on a full-time basis where you, you might not necessarily be working. And you've got your employer's support, so when we say the support, we're talking about they're giving you time, so at least six hours per week is the minimum, although at Cranfield we ask for seven. Um, per week to come and study with Cranfield. So that might be face-to-face -face or it might be online or self-directed learning. And that's an average over the course of your apprenticeship programme. So sometimes you might be at Cranfield for two or three days during the month, um, but then on another week, so you'll still be in the workplace. Um, it's paid for out of the apprenticeship levy. So all employers who have a pay bill of over three million pounds have to pay a portion of that into what's called the apprenticeship levy and that money is ring fenced and can only spent, be spent on apprenticeships. You get to obtain a recognised qualification and I think the benefit here is it's not just an apprenticeship qualification, you often get um, an academic award, so maybe a master's degree, postgraduate diploma um, and you also get often a certificate from the Endpoint Assessment Organisation too. So there's not many opportunities where you take undertake one programme of study and you get three uh, recognised qualifications from it. Uh, and for organisations, it's that opportunity to really show your value, that you value your employees um, and give them the opportunity to upskill. Shall I talk about the benefits as well? We want to hear you, about it. Yeah, let's go for it. So it's hands-on learning. So as I said, before you're taking that learning from the workplace, uh, sorry, from, from the classroom directly into the workplace straight away. So you've got that on the job training. Um, you're getting real world experience um, in your chosen field. So not only in the classroom learning from our academic staff who also undertake consultancy work as well as research, um, you're learning as well and implementing that into your workplace, putting it in uh, straight away. Um, you can develop your skills, so um, as I said, each apprenticeship standard has certain knowledge, skills and behaviours, and those are the knowledge, skills and behaviours um, that industry has said they want to see staff have. So the industry develop those uh, apprenticeship standards, so you are developing skills that are needed within your industry. There is a question I do have, actually, and it relates to something you said on the previous slide. And there is a question from Annabelle, who's asking, how do non-levy paying small businesses obtain apprenticeship funding? Can they attain? They, they absolutely can, and that's a great question. So if you're from an SME, so doesn't pay into the, the apprenticeship levy, um, this is going to sound slightly unbelievable, but the <laughs> government will actually fund 95% of the apprenticeship fee, wow. of the apprenticeship levy funding band fee. So if that funding, you know, 14,000, the government is paying 95% of that, and the, the small organisation would only pay the 5% um, of the apprenticeship fee. So it, it's such a great opportunity and it really does mean that um, small businesses can, can maximise the opportunities for their staff too. So Annabelle, if you were listening, watching, wow, that's good news. Brilliant. Tell us more about the benefits uh, of an apprenticeship. So it's the opportunity, it's those diverse opportunities. So because they, they're undertaking those knowledge, skills and behaviours, um, you get to experience more within the workplace as well. So it's not just within your role, you might go and work with other teams, get to be involved in other projects, the opportunity to step up and take on more responsibility uh, within your apprenticeship. Um, and apprenticeships are really wide and varied. You might think of traditional ones, maybe like bricklaying and hairdressing, but here in Cranfield, we specialise in technology and management. 
and so we offer apprenticeships in all sorts of um, areas within these and uh, specifically manufacturing leadership and sustainability which we will talk about uh, more later on although we are focusing on our school of management apprenticeships today there is the opportunity for lifelong learning so um, as i said before you you might have been quite a time before uh, quite a time since uh, you've done any formal education but this is a great opportunity to start again and then continue on that path um, once, you, once you have uh, returned and started studying here with us at Cranfield. And before we go to Neil who's going to talk about why we choose an apprenticeship just a reminder if you've got a query already about what you've heard please type something into the text chat it could be an observation it could be a challenge even uh, or a question into the text chat and we will do our level best to come round to it. So you're going to pass over now to, to Neil to talk about why we choose an apprenticeship. Why choose one in the first place? Neil, over to you. So why choose an apprenticeship with us at Cranfield? Uh, well, yeah, we, we are an, an inclusive and accessible organisation. Um, we have an, a learning environment that really supports growth and makes sure that everybody that studies with us has that opportunity to get an equally uh, rewarding uh, engagement. We, in order to do that, one of the things that we do do is that we look at our academic staff to student ratio and at the moment we're running currently at one to one, one to five. So it's one of those ratios that are really important in terms of the quality of learning and the quality of engagement and, and, and support that you get as an apprentice if you're studying with us at Cranfield. An apprenticeship is also very holistic in the sense that if you think about um, a, t a, a traditional teaching program, it's very much about learning knowledge. As Christina has already talked about, it develops knowledge, it develops skills and it develops behaviours. So take those three elements and it gives you this complete holistic approach to learning, both in the workplace, in the classroom and in life. And that's a, a really important thing. And because of the nature of the people that come on board, as you'll, you'll find out shortly later on with, with a couple of our uh, apprentices that we've got here at Cranfield that we'll talk to you later, um, you know, that means that there's a real commitment to this, this. And actually that gives us an excellent pass rate. We're currently experiencing 98 to 99% pass rates with an averaging out at 97 um, for all of our programmes, which is absolutely fantastic. And, 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 you know, that is one of the highest in the country in terms of pass rates for uh, apprenticeships. So it's a high quality education. We've got one of the world class leading school of management, ranked, ranked top 10 in the world. So, you know, a finer place you couldn't find and some of the greatest minds and some of the greatest business people. So in that sense, not only are we teaching from an academic standpoint, but we're also teaching from a business point of view as well. And we will bring in visiting lecturers and, and specialist to, speakers to talk to and support the apprenticeship process. And that may include people from industry that are currently dealing with real global and, and current crisis issues. So we also provide fantastic infrastructure and support for both the apprentice whilst they're with us and their employer while they're supporting that apprentice. So you know, it, it, it's, it's a holistic approach, as I've explained. So that's part of the reason why we should um, you know, choose an apprenticeship here at Cranfield. And part of that also is the fact that we take a very, very business led uh, approach to our curriculums. So if you think about the teaching program that you're coming on to, we will have looked at both management and technical and digital content. And how does that align to your specialist area? Now you might say, well, senior managers, senior managers, but actually there are some nuances to each of those roles that you take on and we can support that with additional learning or module selection. So we take a problem based, uh, based approach to learning as well. Rather than teach and talk, we talk about what's the current situation? How would we approach this? How would we deliver it? Some of that's case study, some of that's real world, but it is problem based learning and people work in, in learning teams or as individuals within their apprenticeship. It is massively collaboration with employers. We have about re, currently around about 350 to 380 apprentice employers that we're working with at any given time. And that means that 
you know, we are engaging with those employers on a regular basis and understanding what their needs are and therefore feeding that back into the delivery of our programs. Christina will uh, tell you about some of the things that she's been doing recently. We put a whole load of briefings on for managers and apprentices prior to the apprenticeship to make sure that actually it's right for you, for your business, for the apprentice. So, you know, beyond today, if you are thinking about this, then, you know, join one of those briefings, understand what's going on and, and see how we can support you in your learning you know, journey. We also think about integration of professional skills. So not only are we looking at just the, you know, the technical and digital content that supports the learning aims, but actually where does that sit within your business context and the professional skills that you'll need to develop and those behaviours. And all of this is delivered in a very blended approach, as you will see. So we've got online learning, we've got this type of broadcast learning that you know, is really high end, and then we've got classroom based and field based in some of the subject areas that we teach. So it's a very broad uh, approach to the delivery that we take. So a unique business led curriculum. I'm going to hand back to, um, no, I'm not, I apologise. I've got that wrong. <laughs> Starting it. So just in terms of us as a provider, sorry. Um, where are we? We were at the last uh, Ofsted visit that we had rated as good. We are expecting to see them again within the next 12 months and we are constantly striving to uh, uh, improve and make sure that we can keep that good rating if, if not improve upon it. Our pass rates, as I've already talked about, sitting at 97 and engagement with employers is Vitally important, as I've explained in the previous slide, to make sure that we are talking to them, they are supporting us with our learning activities and we're making sure that actually we're listening to that market. And in listening to that market, we are growing our portfolio. So we were the first to deliver the Level 7 apprenticeship uh, at Senior Leader. We were the first provider to market. We now have something in the region of, I think it's 17 apprenticeships that we currently offer across a range of subject areas, including level six as well as now, you know, as level seven. So we've expanded our portfolio to make sure that we are giving the best opportunities we can. But we do specialise. We specialise in areas of leadership and management, in science and technology, in manufacturing support systems, and uh, more recently through our level six provision, we've got a fantastic digital offering as well. So. You know, it's a broad range of things, but equally it's very focused around some very key areas that support business and industry. So what makes Crumfield a great provider? The environment, the people, the apprentices, the employers, all of the above. It is a combination of all of those great things. So we have some of the best apprentices and, and that, that you can imagine. Their employers are brilliant, as you will find out from our our two guests later on this morning. Um, and then also, you know, the, the teaching staff are some of the best in the world. They are renowned. They are people that have got accolades of all sorts and they are there to support your apprentices. And that's, that, that's brilliant. And yes, we've got some world-class leading facilities here at Cranfield that actually make it a great place to learn. So that's us as a provider. I'm gonna move on now and just cover a little bit about some of the School of Management portfolio that we offer. Um, it's a broad arrangement, but basically we have a senior leader um, program, um, which is you know, our, our, our business. And then on top of that, we've got sustainability business specialist apprenticeship. And you'll hear later on from one of the um, apprentices that are on that program. We've got a senior investment and commercial banking professional apprenticeship very much focused on that sector and about supporting those individuals within that sector. Senior Leader Apprenticeship and Executive MBA. So not only is it just looking at the senior leadership piece of it, but it's actually then giving you the opportunity to move on to do an Executive MBA, which you know for a lot of people is a life's ambition and therefore we are supporting a huge number of senior leaders to actually finally get to their, uh, you know, target objective is which to actually have that learning to support their role within the business. So 
we often think of apprenticeships as being at the starter end of the market but very much we are looking here at the higher end of the market in terms of working with some very senior executives in some very stressful roles in some very very demanding environments in which they're operating and that I think from an experience point of view as an apprentice means that you are working with some of the best minds as your fellow apprentices when you're working in those groups and that in itself is, 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 is gold. It is absolutely gold. Next uh, April we will be launching the Senior People Professional Apprenticeship which is an, a new, new for us and, and we've already got a good cohort starting to build around that and we've just recently approved that. So you know, those are four of our School of Management Apprenticeships. If we can just quickly move on um, to the other one. Here we go. So we also run a senior leader executive program um, and that is a program that is doesn't have the MBA but actually very much focuses on those key, key aspects of the senior leader role and it might be for people that are in that position but aren't yet ready to take that step onto an MBA for instance. And then we've got the senior leader apprenticeship for management and leadership and this is for emerging talent this is where we, we get people that are coming through and what they're focusing on is um, their development in their career trajectory. So as an, empl as an employee, they may not yet be in that full senior leader role, but they are on the cusp of it. And this program will give them that, that lift into that space that they, they may wish to do. We also run a marketing and leadership MSC and, and a logistics and supply chain MSC as well all based around that senior leader program. So you can see from one apprenticeship program there, we've got a very broad range of different applications that will suit many, many businesses. So lots to think about uh, and lots of options to choose should you uh, wish to do so. So that's a little bit about our apprenticeship portfolio. And I'm sure one of the questions that may come up is, well, great, how do I get involved in this and I'm going to hand back to Christina in the studio who's going to talk a bit about that process now. Thank you. Brilliant. Before you pitch in there, I know you've got a bunch of slides, there is a question from Chipiwa uh, from Network Rail, interestingly, uh, we were joined with uh, later on. Uh, I'm interested in the Senior Leadership Apprenticeship plus Executive MBA. How many live teaching in-person days would we be expected to attend per month on average? Not sure if that's you or Neil that can answer that one. Oh, so that's an interesting question, and it would vary depending on the apprenticeship program chosen. So, senior leader, um, we have quite a few different variants, as, as Neil just went through. So, um, for example, if you chose senior leader um, to then go on to, to complete the executive MBA, for example, you would do three on day teaching days per month face-to-face uh, -face on campus so that's a Thursday Friday Saturday um, and it's normally we teach from in and around nine nine o'clock in the morning until 5 30 6 o'clock in the evening and then there's the opportunity for networking and refreshments uh, in the evening with your learning group um, should you choose it's not essential to stay on campus just to be clear um, but quite a lot of our apprentices really find that beneficial. Um, for example, the management and leadership option, so the senior leader plus uh, MSc in management and leadership, you would spend, I believe it's four days on campus and I think it's a Tuesday to Friday. Um, and that is, I believe, once every six weeks. So it's a slightly different variation. So it really does depend on the apprenticeship programme chosen, um, but we can provide um, the dates up front. We always give them up front so that then you can plan your time and plan your absences from the office and make sure that you, you've kind of earmarked that time, ready to really dedicate and spend your time on campus. And you're not trying to do those work emails on the <laughs> side while the lecture's going on, because we'll notice that. <laughs> Christina, thank you very much. And I guess you're going to say there's also loads of information on the website. So yes. that's your first port of call. Yeah, definitely. Have a read through the website and it will probably generate lots more questions for you. And, and the questions it generates are always different for every individual. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely worth looking on there and then getting in touch. Um, normally, the, the first point of inquiry comes to myself. Um, if it's all about module content and delivery, we'll get you in touch with the course team, book a meeting with a course director, for example. Um, if it's more about how the apprenticeship levy works, um, how, how to apply, what's the application process, um, then I'm here and ready to support you're with that. You're the person. I am. Brilliant. It's great to have you with us. And I just noticed in the text chat there, Ben, you've been talking to Dr. Rosina Watson. Dr. Rosina Watson is joining us in the text chat. He's, she's co-director 
uh, course director of the Sustainability MSc. And so, Rosina, you've answered uh, Ben your question, but Ben's question, if you've seen the chat there, is around flexibility of attendance of the online sessions every Friday. Uh, and I think you can read that. If you've not had a chance to ask a question, now is a good time before we go back to Rosina, sorry, back to uh, Christina, sorry, uh, and find out a little bit more about um, what do we do? App the application process. You talked about application there and you being the person, but how do you apply? So the, the first stage in the application process is for your employer to make contact with us. Um, so there is expressions of interest forms on our website. So they're on lots of the pages and essentially they're all the same form. So whichever course you land on, you can click on that expression of interest link and it takes you to the same form. Um, and that allows us to gather all the information we need about you as an employer um, to create an employer profile, um, ensure that you've got the right level of support for your apprentices in place. And then we send you the application link. So actually I've got a slide um, if you we can pop that up. So um, we've just gone through the uh, submit an expression of interest and then the application uh, link goes out. This is shared internally and um, so we don't have it on the website and that is to make sure only those that have their employer support um, apply with us because it's absolutely crucial. So you would apply online as the individual, your HR team wouldn't do this for you or your line manager, it has to be the individual applicant. Uh, and it's on our system called EVE. So you apply in many ways in the, in the same way as a traditional student uh, would apply. So you, you create that and um, you'd submit a personal statement and that is in and around why you want to undertake an apprenticeship. What are your motivations? What are you going to get out of doing this? How is it going to benefit you and your employer? Um, how is it going to support you in your, in your workplace? You then want to do undertake what's called an initial assessment um, and this is to confirm your eligibility for apprenticeship funding. So although your employer has this levy pot, um, the Education and Skills Funding Agency have very specific rules about who is eligible for funding um, and they, um, so we undertake this to check that you're not already too advanced because an apprenticeship has to teach you new knowledge, skills and behaviours. We check that you don't already have a qualification at the same level, so for example level 7 um, in the same area. So if you were going to come and do a senior leader apprenticeship with us, um, you wouldn't already be able to hold an MSc in leadership and management for example. But if you had an MSc in banking, that would be absolutely fine. Or if you had an MSc in mathematics, also fine. Um, so it just has to be a different subject area. Um, we also checked um, in and around residency, there are rules around how long you have needed to have lived in the UK prior to um, starting and also making sure you've got a visa or eligibility to work and live in the UK for longer than the duration of the apprenticeship. So that's really important. And we do ask for a little bit of extra time. So should you need to take a break in learning or you might need to, to retake a module, for example, you have time to do that. You haven't got that time pressure um, of a, a, a visa deadline, for example. We also do uh, maths and English assessments, and that's to assess your current working level. Um, we know that for some of you, it's been quite a time since your secondary education, so we want to check that your, your maths and English um, working level is at two or higher. If it's not, we'll support you when you come on programme with us. We ask your employer to, uh, to confirm support as well, um, because we need to know that they are on board. Your line manager is going to be there to give you that time to come and study at Cranfield with us, um, and that they're going to support you in finding opportunities to apply those new knowledge, skills and behaviours in the workplace to develop your apprenticeship portfolio. Should we talk about the key dates now? or we? Can yeah, no, please, because Lavinia has a question exactly about that. So ah, what sort of key great dates? Great timing. Yeah, good timing. What sort of questions? What sort of times are we looking at there? So we've got each of the apprenticeships that are coming up um, for the remainder of this academic year on screen now. So um, our sustainability um, specialist deadline is the 9th of January. So that is for the applicant to apply. So I just want to stress that all of these are application deadlines. We do ask the expressions of interest to come in um, a couple of weeks before so that we can absolutely guarantee to get that application link out to you as an employer and that you have time to share that internally um, and your um, employees have time to complete that application form um, in a really thoughtful, thoughtful and meaningful way. We've then got our senior leader executive programme. So that is a can be a slightly more customised programme. So if you had a large number of employees that you wanted to go on um, a single programme together, then that is, is one that is really suited to that. Or you have a consortium where you might have four or five organisations together on one cohort 
whereas our other apprenticeships tend to have maybe one or two from each employer, so they're styled in slightly different ways. Um, on the 22nd of January, we've got a deadline for our um, senior leader plus management and leadership apprenticeship programme. Um, as Neil said earlier, that is for those with um, slightly less management ex experience, we'd probably be looking for maybe three years um, experience in the workplace um, post undergraduate degree. If you don't hold an undergraduate degree, don't worry, um, we'd just be looking for slightly more, maybe five to six years experience. We've then got on the 24th of January, um, our senior leader plus executive MBA option. Um, so that would require slightly more experience it is for those um, more senior leaders um, within the organisation or those striving to be. Um, we would look for around five years minimum experience um, in the workplace um, prior to application. On the 19th of February, so uh, hitting half term for most people, um, we've got a uh, senior leader plus marketing and leadership um, apprenticeship. Um, so that focus is um, purely on marketing. So it's more specialist. Um, on the 23rd of February we've got the launch of our senior people professional so this is this will be our first cohort we're really excited um, it is designed for those HR professionals um, we're really looking forward to this and it's proving popular already. So I think that is, that concludes our intakes for this year and then we'll be launching early next year uh, intakes from September onwards so we'll keep you up to date on those. Brilliant. Uh, Lavinia actually has a question around start dates, not so much key dates for the application, but when will the face-to-face -face teaching be? When's the next start date after March 2024? Do you have that in your head? For, is there a specific Yeah, no, Lavinia, program? I'm not sure. If you're joining us, Lavinia, let us know uh, when, which course you're talking about. Are they, so they span across the whole year, I'm assuming? Yes, yes. So lots of our apprenticeship programmes do start in September and October, as traditionally they are the most um, popular months for um, postgraduate or undergraduate and postgraduate study to start. Um, so we do keep in line with those. Um, and then we also have... Um, starts in March and April as well if we have second intakes. Um, I know for sustainability we're looking at two intakes for next year so we have our next one it starts in March 24 and then we're also looking at September 24 as well and that is definitely a popular apprenticeship programme. Brilliant thank you and we've got a bunch of questions coming in so again please send us your questions. First one I think is from Joseph and Joseph is saying um, could you advise please on how much time a student needs to allow for independent study? completing coursework, et cetera, per week. What's, what's your recommendations? That's a really popular question, and it's also a tricky one to answer. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Because it, it depends on your experiences already and your, your background knowledge in that area. And also, uh, you know, for those that really enjoy maths uh, and are that way inclined, accounting and finance can be a real breeze. If maths isn't your bag, then it can prove more of a challenge. And they, so the, the apprenticeship requires that you study an absolute minimum of six hours per week on average. At Cranfield, we recommend seven, but we are aware that our apprentices get really enthusiastic and are very excited by their study and often choose to do more reading, more research um, in their own time, which is optional. Um, sometimes their employers like to give them time. Um, and other times, that actually, when they're implementing their new knowledge, skills and behaviours in the workplace, um, it happens so organically that nobody, you know, it's not defined that off the job training is not as defined as, you know, I'm going to spend six hours on Monday doing mm. this. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it does happen more naturally, I think, than people assume. Um, I know that wasn't a very specific answer to that question there, um, but it is it's quite hard to to kind of really pin it down, if I'm honest. I think keep the questions coming and also we can talk offline as well, so that's also an option. Um, Linda has a question, and I'm not sure uh, in terms of um, personal details, but Linda is a general counsel and wants to know what sort of management qualification to progress to. Um, I guess that's a conversation you could have with Linda, uh, or we're looking at Management, um, executive MBA, what other management qualifications? So we've got the MSc in management and leadership, so you, they're all senior leader is the start, that's part one, so you complete that apprenticeship and then you've got this opportunity to build on that apprenticeship and go on to what we call part two, which is where you can top up from postgraduate diploma, which is 100 and, um, 120 credits, um, you can then carry on and get an additional 80 credits to take you to a full master's qualification, which is 200 credits at Cranfield. We're slightly different to other, other postgraduate universities, but we like to be different and um, we work you slightly harder. <laughs> oh, okay, you slipped that in there. That was a, that was a shock. 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, depends which one you'd be interested in, but we could we can explore those, explore the um, experience you've already had, uh, your background, and then what would be your aims and objectives, and then talk about which apprenticeship programme would be most suitable um, to achieve that. Brilliant, Thank Linda. You. Let's carry on that conversation. It's not as hard. I'm going to say it's not as hard as Christina said it is. Um, there's a ton more questions, but I want to come to those in a second because I want to talk to some real students. Uh, like I said before at the very beginning, this is my the, the pleasure of my job is to talk to students actually on the course, and it's your chance to ask, well, what's it really like? Okay, so we've heard from Neil about the portfolio, we've heard from Christina about the application and some key dates, but what is it really like? I want to go to Sarah if I can. Uh, and find out a little bit more about the marketing uh, and leadership. Sarah, first of all, amazing looking office. I'm loving that chair. Um, tell us a bit. More, tell us a bit more about yourself and what you're studying. Uh, good afternoon, Toby. So my name is Sarah Lewis. I'm actually the head of communications for Iris Software Group. Uh, we are based in beautiful Berkshire. Uh, I'm sat uh, in one of our. Oh, I'm sat in our head office at the moment. Uh, I can actually see Windsor Castle um, in the Whoa. in the distance, which is a great, great location. So Sarah, tell me, why did you decide to study that particular course, and why at Cranfield? Um, well, look, an Iris Software Group, we absolutely love, love learning. I mean, I cannot speak highly enough um, of my employer in terms of being curious, you know, and really being passionate about everybody, you know, learning across the business. So it was really introduced to me um, through Iris. Now, I'm actually one of those people with a very non-existent further education. So when the opportunity came up to study an apprenticeship, I was absolutely in the right place to kind of say, my goodness, I have never, never gone to university. I just about uh, did some A-levels uh, and then trundled off into the world of work. So I had spent many years really kind of quite hiding this, uh, this non-existent education that I've had. And I just felt it was a really great opportunity, you know, from the support of a really great employer um, to actually kind of take on the apprenticeship. And when I spoke to Cranfield, uh, it was really about putting, it was the prospect of putting my experience, you know, into formal academic qualifications. And I think that's what really excited me about, you know, about Cranfield and about the apprenticeship. And of course, once you've spoken to Cranfield, um, you know, the prospect of actually coming to Cranfield and learning from one of the greatest universities in the world, you know, you just can't say no. <laughs> We're your best friend. Oh, we love you saying that, Sarah. Thank you so much. And I can just see some blue sky and a little bit of clouds, the same as we've got behind us here. I think you're passing your weather on. Sarah, stick around because there's a ton more questions. I want to move, if I can, please, to Wendy, Wendy Wheeler. Uh, and Wendy, can you, I've got the kind of same question to you. Can you introduce yourself, first of all, to the audience? Um, and then I'm going to ask you about the course. Where are you based? Yep. Um, so I'm Wendy. I am a Principal Environment and Social Value Manager for Network Rail. I actually look after sustainability in the Scotland region. Um, and I'm based, um, I guess my job is based in Glasgow, but at the moment I'm at home in Teesside in North East England. I Where didn't realise. Sunny I didn't, today. I didn't realise you were based in Glasgow. I know you're based in Teesside, but I didn't realise that. Why did you choose, what course are you looking at and why did you choose that particular course with Cranfield? Um, so I'm on the uh, sustainability master's course. Um, and I kind of, I guess I'm giving a similar answer to Sarah in that I'm one of those other um, people without any higher education um, qualifications when I left school, I was sick of studying and I wanted to go and get a job and that's what I did. Um, and I have worked in uh, for 30 years in the sustainability arena, predominantly in energy management and decarbonisation. But um, yeah, I've kind of worked my way up through my career to a more strategic level. And I guess now I've got imposter syndrome because I don't have <laughs> um, the qualifications um, behind me. And you see an awful lot of the people that are coming through into the industry now who have their degrees and, and whatever. So um, I felt it was kind of time to get the paperwork to back the job up, really. <laughs> well, hold those thoughts and more questions coming your way. Sarah, can I come back to you? Um, Tell us, maybe it's too soon to say, but Sarah, how has the apprenticeship impacted your work? Can you apply it directly? Oh, my goodness, every, every day. 
<laughs> with, without a doubt. <laughs> and even, honestly, Toby, from the first residential course, I'm sitting there actually learning and thinking, I need my to-dos list for work. This is this this I could apply tomorrow. And you know, I find we have residential course um, for, uh, courses over a week um, with uh, my masters in in marketing and leadership. And I'm I'm exhausted by the end of the week. And you know, you're exhausted because you're taking in so much amazing information. And at the same time, you're processing it and thinking, my goodness, how can I apply this at work? Or what I, I need to apply this. You know, we we get together as a as a learning team in the evenings, and actually, you're sitting there talking about, oh my goodness, I'm going to take this and I can do this with this learning that I've learned today, and I can take this back to work next week. And you know, you're constantly thinking about the application of the learning in your work day to day. That does sound exhausting. At the end of the week, you must be exhausted, right? Exhausted, but also massively exhilarated. <laughs> you know, you, you, it's, I, I get so excited after I've been to Cranfield for a week because, you know, you know that you are taking away something that's going to last you for life. And, you know, having doing a master's while, you know, I'm a little bit older in life means that uh, the application of it is is so important to me and you know so important in terms of being able to add more value for iris and you know the work that we're actually doing uh, for our, our customers as well so you know it is it is an ongoing it's yes it's exhausting but it's a great exhausting and you recover very quickly don't we? don't get me wrong <laughs> <laughs> wendy can i ask a similar thing to you in terms can you give an example maybe wendy of how you've been able to apply some of the work that you've been doing over the last 18 months i guess it is well, how do you apply yeah. that back into your work? Um, so I guess like Sarah said, every day um, you're taking what you're learning and, and applying it directly. And certainly when you're on your lectures or you're doing your self-study, um, you are always thinking about how can I apply this directly to my role. Um, and so one of the examples, um, so we recently did a module on strategic foresight. Um, which I really loved um, and I enjoyed that immensely, but I could see that I could use that for um, planning scenarios for the future, which would then feed into our enterprise risk management. So building those scenarios, looking further ahead to see what might happen and what risks might fall out of that, those scenarios and therefore build them into today's risk management functions so that we could be more secure um, for the unexpected, really. So I guess that's one of the examples that I would take. Um, but yeah, you you use your learning every day. And I'm personally, I'm really passionate about apprenticeship learning because I guess that's how my career has developed. And I'm not a very good studier in terms of you know reading something. I can read something, but it doesn't go in very well. <laughs> I've got to. I've got to learn by doing and therefore the apprenticeship route is excellent for me because I can immediately apply what I'm learning and sometimes it's just through osmosis you don't even realize that you're doing it um, but it's a really really useful way of learning and it's something that you can immediately apply to your work situation. Brilliant and Wendy I'm going to follow on there and Ben also kicked us off talking about the online lectures for the sustainability apprenticeship. Practically, Wendy, how does it work? Are you in front of a screen for a day? Uh, how comfortable and how easy is that, practically speaking? I mean, the days are, I'm trying to think of the right word. Long. They're intense um, <laughs> sometimes with the learning, but um, yes, you're, you're kind of in front of a screen all day, but you guys build breaks into the day. Um, and it's not all lectures, it's not death by PowerPoint, which is great. And that was one thing that I was really worried about. Um, so the breakout groups, the interaction with the rest of the cohort, and you have your breakouts into your active learning sets and you do group work there during the, the lecture days. So although, yes, it's a long day, it's, it's very interactive. It's continually engaging. Um, and yeah, the days go quite quickly. In yes. fact, the course has gone really quickly. And you're coming to the, you're in your last module, as I understand it. Mm, so yeah. that's brilliant. Sarah, can I, come and, mm. can I come to you? Sorry, Sam. Can I come to mm. you, Sarah? Um, I think the course has also got accreditation with the Chartered Institute of Marketing. How important 
was that for you when you chose the course? It was it it was a great great part to uh, uh, to explore while I was looking at the course and actually the Chartered Institute of Marketing in the UK is the marketing the the marketing institute. I think that by adding the Chartered Institute of Marketing to this, what I see is you know the combined credentials um, of two amazing organisations. You know we need to keep up to date in marketing. The world is changing. You know actually how we're addressing how we're addressing marketing, what we're doing in marketing needs to needs to be kept up to date. So when you know that you are actually working with somebody like the Chartered Institute of Marketing, you know that it's going to be current. And actually getting then involved with them as an institution as well means that you can actually make sure that you are continuing with the continuing with your professional development you know long after the masters has finished and, and lily has a question i'm not sure whether sarah you can answer this but certainly christina and and uh, neil can help when you come to cranfield for those residential periods uh, is the on-site accommodation for the in-person teaching covered by the apprenticeship levy that you're aware of at least it's it's not covered by the levy, um, but you know, to please talk to your employer. Um, is what I would say because there's varying levels of support. Your employer will be able to provide you, you know, around around the apprenticeship too. So you know, I do get support from Iris from um, for for uh, my residentials, and food and those sorts of things. And, and tell uh, me, oh, go ahead, Neil, go ahead. Yeah, Toby, I was just going to add to that that uh, the apprenticeship levy does not cover that cost. So. Um, if we could incorporate it, we would, but the, the rules of the apprenticeship levy are that they prevents the use of those funds for accommodation and travel and subsistent purposes. So that's why we have to recharge that out directly to the, to the employer. Um, but as Sarah says, you know, we've got various options and a lot of employers are actually very good to support their apprentices and give them the best experience. So don't see mm -hmm. it as a preventing the you know, uh, somebody joining, let's talk to you and about how we can support you. Thanks for the yeah. clarification, Neil. Thank you. And Sarah, back to you in terms of Iris and the support that they give you. Have you had to negotiate that? How has that been, that relationship? No, no, I've not had to negotiate everything. I mean, we have a really good apprenticeship community um, within Iris. So we have kind of lots of teams groups that, you know, you can go in and you can share your experiences with other apprentice apprenticeships as well. Um, we also, you know, working alongside Cranfield, you know, we do talk as, you know, as a student employer, you know, and and the apprentice and Cranfield once every quarter. Um, and with that, you know, my my CMO actually, or my chief marketing officer um, is in incredibly supportive, looking at where I'm actually finding my evidence from, um, opening doors for me, you know, creating opportunities um, to really demonstrate value across the business. So there, there is an awful lot of support from um, from my employer to be able to do this. But that's, you know, that's part of our culture and that's part of our ethos at Iris. Thank you. And, and Wendy, to you on employer support, how is that for you? Yeah. Um... Great. I guess it will vary from employer to employer, but yeah, Network Rail is is a really good employer. Um, supports apprenticeships, and I get an awful lot of support from um, both my line manager and my um, sponsor, my apprenticeship sponsor, in in making sure that we've we've got all of the support that we need. And Wendy, back to you again around um, the day that you spend. You talked about it being engaging the lectures. Do you get a chance to network with the other people on the program? I guess you learn not just from the faculty here at Cranfield, but from each other. Yeah, we. I mean, we really do. We've got WhatsApp groups set up for the whole cohort, but also my active learning set group, which you spend an awful lot of time doing group work with, with your active learning set. And um, yeah, we've got a little support mechanism there, which is great. It's great to network. So um, at the residentials, it's lovely to get together because we're all dispersed around the country. So it's really nice to get together with with your cohort at the the residentials. But also, um, yeah, we will um, set up calls when we're doing group work um, so that we're touching base all of the time, supporting each other. And actually, it's now spilling out into our work environment. So one of the cohort members um, works for Hypnos Beds, and you would wonder what is Network Rail doing with Hypnos Beds, but they're in um, some um, 
association for royal warrant holders and they're looking for biodiversity opportunities and um, to make wildlife corridors and of course network rail is one massive corridor so um, we're working with them outside of the apprenticeship to to look at opportunities that might be available in partnership um so yeah it's it spills out um into your areas of work and you're making those connections for life really gosh who would have thought mattresses and rail rail now that's really quite <laughs> that's really quite yeah. something uh, can, Sarah, I, can I just add to that, actually, Toby, ahead. that, um, you know, with, the, the, with le your learning cohort, you go through a lot of great, great case studies when you're doing the learning. And that then spills out into case studies within your learning group as well and within your cohort. And that is equally as valuable as listening to, you know, listening to, to the great, you know, the great case studies that the lecturers are actually putting out there. So, you know, having those shared experiences, having the shared difficulties as well between you and understanding how everybody's actually overcome it um, it's a really you know it's a real additional benefit um to the to the learning it's almost that ripple effect um that you have with your cohort sarah thank you for endorsing that um i've got a question for christina uh, guys stick around because there's more questions coming in christina i think neil mentioned it and maybe you did too you're doing briefings say more about those briefings is that aimed at the employer principally um so we do um two different types of briefings <clears throat> We do one where it's uh, how to apply for an apprenticeship. So we talk you through the application process, the expectations, how to complete each stage, um, because it's really tempting to tell us how absolutely fantastic you are as an applicant. <laughs> and we know that you are because you're going to come to Cranfield. Hey. However, um, people tend to over egg themselves. This is not a job application. We want exactly where you are. We want a real look and a real assessment of your current knowledge, skills and behaviours. And essentially, um, if you haven't been to university for a long time and, or you're more junior within your role, you know you've not long been in it, then you're unlikely to be an expert in each of the knowledge, skills and behaviours required by the apprenticeship standard. And that's why you're going to come and do the apprenticeship. So when you fill out that initial assessment and you're rating yourself, we give you that guidance to, to say, please don't you know, over egg yourself and tell us how absolutely great you are and you've got all this experience when actually that's not quite true yet. <laughs> uh, but it will be at the end of your apprenticeship. So that's where, that's where we'll get you to. So we do support you in that sense and also um, talk about each of the stages because um, it, it is a lengthy process and, and that is because we have requirements that we have to meet with the Education and Skills Funding Agency, uh, making sure you're eligible. We wouldn't ever want somebody to start one of our programmes to then find out, actually, we can't fund you. Um, so it, there is a timeline to it. And so we support you with that as an applicant. And employers are also really welcome to join those webinars and um, to find out what's expected of an applicant um, through the process and how they can support and help as well with that. Um, once somebody's been made an offer, um, we do invite employers to come to an onboarding webinar with us. So that's specifically for line managers, but key contacts. So if, you, if you're in HR, you overlook the business and look after all the apprentices, but not in the fine detailed way, you're welcome to join that webinar too. But it's primarily aimed at line managers um, to help them understand the expectations of them whilst their employee is with us and studying. Um, so we talk about how they can help them, how they can support them with opportunities in the workplace, um, the review meetings that take place regularly, what, what happens at those meetings um, and how they can support their apprentice going forward. Um, we found them to be really useful. We had one this morning, in fact, wow. um, and we get a lot of engagement from employers um, with that. And it really helps set the scene for them um, and help them understand what their apprentice is going to be doing uh, whilst they're with us here at Cranfield. Brilliant, thank you. And Neil, I've got one for you. This is from Laura, and uh, feel free, uh, Christina, to pitch in. Laura's asking, what learning pathways can be embedded for senior leaders using the levy? Well, as, as we described earlier, we have a number of pathways, such as the uh, supply and logistics that we've talked about, the marketing that, that Sarah's talked about very eloquently. Um, these are the ones we've chosen. We have variants around the mark, management and leadership and the MBA. Um, all of them, um, primarily the senior leader programme, is funded by the apprenticeship to a value of £14,000. The additional pathways beyond that, in some cases, will require additional funding from employers. Um, but you know, those are conversations we can have with individual employers as and when we get to that, that point in the, in the dialogue. 
there are many other pathways that we don't currently offer but you know if an employer comes along and says you know we'd like to look at this and and and, and understand how this particular program or part of the business could be beneficial um then you know there's a conversation to be had i'm sure but there are um the the, the beauty of um something like the, the foundation of a, of a senior leader is that you can build into that uh, specialist areas and subject matter so i think it, you there was a question earlier from one of the delegates that was asking about they were they were council and, and what leadership management now we don't currently offer a, a specific around law modules but you wouldn't need that but what you might need is operating in a service industry context as opposed to somebody working in like uh, a, a management uh, position within a, uh, a manufacturing business so you know it, it all depends on the application of your role what you see yourself in trying to achieve and, and then picking you know various pathways but um, some pathways are funded by the apprenticeship level some aren't it all depends on the standard and what the standard will allow um, and, and one thing about apprenticeship standards and levy is is that the rules are complex but we're here to help you with those <laughs> that's good to hear so laura hopefully you've understood that point so please stay in touch if you haven't if we haven't answered your question camilla has a question i'm not quite sure who to point this to so i'm going to put it to you first of all camilla's looking ahead about personal projects at what point do personal projects need to be confirmed can a personal project be carried out for my organization's client oh this is a good question so each of the apprenticeships vary slightly but what's really key at cranfield is when we set assignments for our apprentices or group work we will be expecting them to bring problems as it were or projects from their workplace um, into the classroom and then work on those and then present and implement back into the workplace so for some of the apprenticeships there's work-based projects which will be a specific project um, that is agreed with the business um, and it is very specific um, but other modules where we we will be setting assignments um, again the expectation is that you bring things from your workplace um, and we work on those but it'll be a, in a less uh, formal way than than a work-based project. Brilliant. I've just noticed the sky outside. There's a dreadful um, cloud coming over here. Um, apologies for that. Um, Sarah, can I come back to you on that same point? Um, do you feel that you can bring iris problems into the classroom? Absolutely. Yeah. It's um and and it's a great way of actually kind of getting lots of different lenses on the problem as well. So you know in terms of you know we I'm doing, obviously doing marketing and leadership. So from a leadership perspective, we there is some great um, areas that we actually explore in terms of both aware, self awareness and awareness of others. So um, you're looking at team roles and kind of like you know you really kind of working with your your colleagues you know within Cranfield to kind of look at those team roles and say well actually how would you look at this you you've got a shaper perspective so what how would you see this problem and it gives you a really great understanding and gives you a different perspective on it but it also really shows you why things like Melbourne team roles are so important um, actually in structuring a senior leadership team so you're kind of getting a little bit of a double level in terms of you know that sharing but also actually what's coming back into you um, and in terms of actually then taking it back into the business um, I mean absolutely I've I've recently done one uh, for a, an assignment for customer relationships and delivery, and um, we were looking at um, a, a thing called a blueprint. Um, so uh, we went through blueprints and uh, how kind of sequencing ladder techniques work within that. And I actually applied this to one of our one of our products or one of our, our services called Iris Anywhere, and I've worked really closely with the director on it. But I've looked at the model and gone. Actually, just a minute, this could be applied in this particular area. <laughs> and then I think I was on a webinar the other day and we were talking about employee experience. And my guest speaker started talking, you know, in the realms of a sequencing ladder technique. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my goodness, this model could be applied here as well. So I've, you know, you kind of keep taking things and actually looking at those problems, looking at how they can be solved, but also it's where you can really add the value. And I think that that is really my biggest takeaway from here is that you know actually yes i can look at problems but also i can look at actually where other areas of the business can be improved and you know using those what that wonderful learning that we've all got from cranfield uh, and applying it in a number of different ways that's wonderful to hear sarah thank you and wendy likewise do you think oh gosh wendy's been on a course you can tell because she's applying some thought to the business is that a two-way kind of revolving door thing how, how is that 
Yeah, and actually somebody did say that to me the other day. <laughs> oh, Wendy's doing a master's. We, we can tell that by the way she's speaking now. Um, and I, But I think that was a really key salient point for me was that, you know, we're dealing with the environment, we're dealing with climate change and adapting to climate change. And um, for sustainability, one of the key things that I took away was that when we were talking about shareholders uh, and sorry, stakeholders, um, and actually we shouldn't have stakeholders, we have stake owners, um, particularly when we're talking about the environment and it's everybody's responsibility. And that is a real shift in viewpoint um, for, for me when in business you always talk about engaging with your stakeholders and there's a difference there between actually telling somebody something as a stakeholder and people collectively doing things for the greater good where stake owners should be um, doing so that was that was the uh, the example where somebody said oh wendy's been on a course <laughs> um but yeah um going back to the original question just the ability to get different ideas from your your cohort members and your active learning sets and those different perspectives from different industries as well because the mindset of those within the rail industry is quite specific to rail obviously whereas i'm in an active learning set with somebody from the food manufacturing industry which has a completely different viewpoint on certain issues and that's really really helpful to to have Brilliant. Thank you very much, Wendy. Uh, there's a question from Linda. And Linda, thank you. If, if you've got to leave, I'm sorry to, ha to have you leave. But contact information, we will put that up onto the screen uh, very shortly. Uh, contact information, your email address or there's a apprenticeship email? Yeah, so we've got apprenticeships at cranfield.ac.uk. So I have access to that inbox and we'll get back to you. Um, it's normally within a couple of working days. If something's really urgent, just get that urgent in that subject line uh, and that will stand out to us. Um, we also have contact details I think we're going to share at the end of the webinar. Um, however, if they're not there, if they're not on a screen, we'll definitely be sending them out with um, the recording. Brilliant. And Linda, if you caught that, uh, apprenticeship at cranfield.ac.uk. Uh, we look forward to hearing you, uh, Linda. Wendy, can I come back to you? Just something, something you said there. And I'm going to take a punt and say that the course has massively boosted your confidence, not that it was low before, but is that fair to say? A huge confidence boost. I think it's very fair to say, yeah. Um, and I don't, I guess it's broadened my, my working portfolio, if you like, because as I mentioned at the start, I came up, up through energy management, energy and carbon management and into real decarbonisation at, at more strategic levels. But of course, we're looking at sustainability as a whole. So it introduces you to um, circular economy principles, biodiversity, um, which are all areas that I've been obviously aware of in throughout my career, but given me that much deeper knowledge in those other areas other than decarbonisation is, is really, really helpful. And I guess, yeah, in doing the course, um, and as you know, Toby, I interact quite a lot when oh, we're yes. on, online. Um, you can't shut me up most of the time. <laughs> but um, we love it. Yes, I, I like the fact that actually, I don't know, it kind of gives you the validation that you, you mm. know your stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you know your stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Sarah, can I come back to you? Um, tips. Put yourself in the shoes of someone thinking of coming on this. I'm not so sure. I haven't been in higher education. What tips and hacks do you recommend? Um, I think, look, first of all, it's it's a really great opportunity to substantiate and further your, your learning and your thinking. If you are looking at it, um, I think that, you know, one number one is, you know, look at it, it's, you know, this is for life. And, you know, you, your mastership, you know, your apprenticeship um, is actually going to stay with you. So, you know, that is really important to consider. Um, when you are looking at it, look, it sounds like it's an awful lot today. And, you know, I'm not going to, there is work to do. And, you know, it, I'm not going to, 
we're, I'm not going to sugarcoat that because you know it is it is an undertaking and it is a commitment. However, what I would say is, look, don't try and eat the elephant. Um, you know, we, there is an awful lot to do, but actually working with Cranfield, working with the Royal Employer, you can actually really break it down into quite edible chunks, and you know, eating elephants then becomes actually a little bit easier. So you know, that's don't get concerned about it if you are looking at my goodness, there's all of this work to do. You know, yes, there is. Um, but it can be managed. Um, I think that the other tip I have is enjoy the journey. You know, every residential yes. I have, you know, every bit of learning I have, actually celebrate it because, you know, it's a moment in your life that actually should be remembered and should be, you know, should be celebrated as, as you go through it. So, you know, do enjoy the journey. I can't tell you how much I enjoy it. And this is coming from somebody that's never been to university. So saying that actually I enjoy my schoolwork, um, it, it almost kind of sounds quite, quite counterintuitive. <laughs> I massively enjoy my assignments. You know, I've got one that um, I'm just you? about to start. I've got one that I'm in the middle of. So, you know, and it's actually about really, really enjoying that journey. You're, you know, my little head actually kind of goes mad as I'm walking around a town centre thinking, Oh my goodness, that's a really good idea for the integrated marketing communications campaign. You know, so it just it doesn't stop. Um, so do enjoy it. That's my tip. The joy in your mm. face is just fantastic to see. I, I thought I heard Neil there. Neil, is that you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 fantastic to hear that level of enthusiasm. It is, um, and also the, the 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 recognition that that learning has such a wide application across many many you know parts yeah. of our life, not just the work life, but we see it in other things that we do. And I think one of the things that my experience, I've been in apprenticeships for a very long time. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to to work with hundreds, if not thousands of, of, of apprentices over many, many years. And one of the things that we always hear back from is, is about the impact it's made on them, their confidence as an individual, but the fact that they have learned something and then been able to apply it into the workplace and then really have a massive impact on their on their ability as an individual to to grow, whether that's through getting a, a promotion, whether that's being able to influence the direction of travel of the business they work for, or whether that's just giving them confidence to go outside of work and do something different, um, you know, whether it's volunteering or supporting the local community or something like that. You know, I, I work with some Jaguar. Land Rover apprentice some years ago that got so enthusiastic about a project they were working on in engineering. They, they, they asked Land Rover to sponsor them to go abroad and actually invest in, in some time to actually bring a project in Africa to life in terms of supporting solar power energy. And, and you know, that was a group of apprentices that had learned some new technology and applied it in a very, very positive way. So I think apprenticeships are brilliant because it's not just about learning, it's about doing. And doing and learning together bring a really powerful result. Well, we seem to be unleashing something with this apprenticeship. Your face when Sarah was talking there, you were lit up. Yeah, you, you, it would, was, you would agree with what she's saying. Definitely. And I, I think one of the key support mechanisms at Cranfield to really give that good experience and to, to see those high pass rates is our apprenticeship tutors, which we haven't actually mentioned Ooh. yet today. Um, but when you study here at Cranfield, every apprentice is given an apprenticeship tutor and essentially they're your cheerleader. They're going to be, be your number one fan. They're going to encourage you, keep you going, point out, you know, where things could have applied. That's a, that's a great piece of evidence for your portfolio. Have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? And I think they really boost our apprentices' confidence as well and really show them that they are excelling, they are progressing at a, a, a vast rate. Um, and I, I think our tutors are really key to the success of many of our apprenticeships here at Cranfield. Brilliant. Well, Wendy, I wanted to give you, Wendy, a chance to say hip, tips, techniques, hacks, what do you recommend if you were in the same position as you were 18 months ago? What would you recommend? Um, yeah, enjoy it. Throw yourself in. Um, it, the really, it, the work really is great. I've really enjoyed it. I would also say have a really good open discussion with your employer so that each party understands the commitment that's needed because, like Sarah said, there is a lot of work and there is no shying away from that and you do need time away from work to do your studies um and you need that needs to be fully understood so you need to have a good um discussion um, and understanding with your employer i would also say um 
don't go into it blind in terms of the amount of work that is needed for self study. Um, it's probably more um, than you might expect, but because you're applying it in your workplace, um, it kind of balances out and it's okay once you get into the rhythm. Um, but at the start, I would say that that was a trouble um, and balancing a really busy job with a busy life and a master's isn't to be sneezed at, but it's so rewarding. That's fantastic to hear. Wendy, thank you. Um, Lavinia, I sh I'm surprised no one else has asked this question, but Lavinia is asking, are there any exams? Oh, that's a good question. So we try not to have too many exams at Cranfield because they're not really reflective of the real world. You know, you're not stuck in a room without Google um, or, your, or your notepad um, in real life. Um, however, there are certain subjects where it's really challenging um, to to kind of assess knowledge gained um, without an exam. So they tend to be more finance based subjects. So finance accounting tend to lean towards exams because that that is, a, um, I think, a proven way to assess knowledge there. Whereas other things we're more focused on group work, um, assignments, presentations, um, that sort of thing that it, that is more reflective of Cranfield's uh, assessment methods. I can almost hear a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, yeah. thank goodness for that. Nobody likes the exam. <laughs> <laughs> and Rosina's just confirmed that on sustainability, there's no exams, which is fantastic to hear. That's why um, everyone likes sustainability. <laughs> And we, we love it too. Uh, Neil, I've got a, a question. There's not many questions left, but if you have a chance, I hadn't had a chance to ask a question, please. There's a few minutes le remaining. I think you've covered this, Neil, but Manny is asking, are any master's qualifications included in the apprenticeship price? I think the answer is yes. Let me just think about that. We, we know that the executive MBA isn't. Um, there are some top up fees for one or two of our programs. Um, so I think it's fair to say, depending on which program you're looking at, there will be, so, so the banking professional one, uh, there is a top up fee. Um, sustainability, there is a top up fee. So some of them have got top up fees because of the additional work that we put in to give you that master's experience above and beyond what the apprenticeship uh, mandates that we deliver. So. It isn't just a straightforward run at, a, at an apprenticeship that you might get elsewhere and at other experiences, but we are actually building in that master's experience, which is, you know, the, as we've heard from our, from our candidates here, a valuable, valuable experience. So uh, talk to us about what, what, what you're thinking about and we'll explain that, that, those options to you. Neil, thank you. A quick practical one, Christina, for you. Uh, I can't find my uh, certificates, maths and English certificates, what do I do? I think this is a common one and what we really stress is it's more important to meet the application deadline than find the certificates right. and miss the deadline. So yes, you will need, um, if you've got a degree, you, we will need to see your degree certificate transcript. Um, if you haven't got hold of those, you can always request copies from your, your previous university. Um, if you're a Cranfield alumni will obviously have them on file, so that that we find. But but for those maths and English, um, you know, there's two types of people in the world, isn't there? There's those that have them in the original envelope that they were given them on results day. I got still. that. That's me. Are you That's that, me. You're that yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's the there's the other camp, oh. which. You know, five Who minutes knows? after they got that certificate, never to be seen again. <laughs> and that is OK, because we can provide guidance on how to find those replacements, get get copies. Um, but essentially, the maths and English certificates, although they are really important, and if you can find them, great to have them at the start of the programme, but absolutely not essential as part of the application process. And if you have lost them, we can give you advice, support on how to how to get copies. If you didn't if you weren't really interested at school at 16 because you had better things to do, that's also fine. Um, we can, again, provide guidance on next steps there. Um, so essentially, most the important thing is to meet the application deadline, submit whatever you have. It's not like a job application. We won't reject it if you're missing a document. We'll just come back. Our admissions team will come back and ask um, ask you for it. It's too good to be true. I know. For goodness we, me. Too kind here What more support could you provide? On that point, there's the last question that's come in. Um, what are the expression of interest and application deadline days? Can you remind us again? Uh, there so is a slide, isn't there? We that... have got that slide up. So uh, if we wait a couple of seconds, I'm sure. There we, we go. go. There we go. So these are the application deadlines. Now, we normally say that the expression of interest deadline is a couple of weeks before. Now, that is only to give us a chance to 
send out the link to you as the employer and then for you to share that internally and also remembering that your applicants will need time to prepare their application in a thoughtful and meaningful way rather than just quickly get their name in. Um, we do read those personal statements, the course di they are read by the course directors as to why you want to undertake the apprenticeships. So it's really important to put um, a lot of thought into that. And um, they're normally quite concise, around 500 words, um, so you don't, don't get a lot to play with there. Um, so yeah, make it, make it concise and thoughtful. Uh, yeah, these are I... the dead. Go for it, Neil. I was just going to say, um, just on, that, on those application deadlines, just for sustainability and senior leader executive programme given that we've got the Christmas break um, prior to those deadlines. Um, if anybody is interested in supporting apprentices into those programmes, either of those programmes, come to us as soon as you can, because it just gives us more time to work with you and get those applications out, as uh, Christina said. So I'm just looking at the dates there, the 9th of January. We'll be on us fairly quickly with mm. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, so just to, just to confirm, so Cranfield as a university closes on the 15th of December, I believe that, that is the Friday 15th, yeah. um, and we reopen on the 2nd of January. Um, so the officers are not staffed during that time, so it's really important that if you want to get that expression of interest link in, um, I would do it at the, you know, the beginning of that last week that we're here. Um, we'll then be able to send you that link out and you can share that link and your apprentices can then apply over the Christmas break, really give a chance to talk to their family about it and put some time and thought into that application and then submit and we'll see that application when we return on the 2nd, um, ready to start that initial assessment process. Wow, I can't believe we're talking about January the 9th being very close, but it is. Thank you. We have run out of time, which is a real shame. I just saw those lowering clouds. Sarah, are the clouds coming over where you are in Windsor? They are indeed, I'm afraid. Yes, yes, they've still got a bit of blue in the sky, though, but uh, it's on its way. <laughs> it's been an absolute joy, Sarah and Wendy, to, for yeah. joining us. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days. Uh, it's another study day today, so thank you again for joining us. And Neil, thank you very much for the guidance that you've given us. And Christina, uh, oh, fantastic. Thank you. And you make it sound so simple and so supportive. So follow the, the advice that you've heard from Christina. So thank you again. The studio managers today were Robin Hackett and Marco Gomez. The producers were Tammy Argent-Peters and David Metcalf. My name is Toby Thompson. Thank you for watching.